Well, it seems like our paths are always going to cross, J.C. Wolf. Because remember back in 2017, over in CCL, where <laughs> you thought you were the hot shit when you were the past, present, future of CEW, even though you got the better of me when it was all said and done, and then you wanted a bigger and better opportunity when you signed with XGWL, when, when both CCL and DCA fired you. Because you've been doing pretty well for yourself. However, here at Phoenix Pro, it's like, what's wrong with you? Because after a match, <laughs> one thing is, I made you look weak. Because one thing is, I took you to Dick Kick City, and and you were like, why, Tony? Why? <laughs> Just like a lot of fans are asking, like, why the hell did I do that? Just keep in mind that I'm the living proof here in CAW. Not just in ACW, but here in Phoenix Pro Damien, as I'm now the leader of BK4. And one thing that I'm going to do, just like how Sherman Sampson took a failing group like the Anarchists and took the group to the stratosphere, that's what I'm going to do here at, in Phoenix Pro with BK4. I'm going to take the team and take them to heights that no one has ever imagined. Because keep in mind, I'm a 20. Yes, you heard me right. A 20-time world champion in CAW. And now, I've been hearing in the locker room that the Phoenix Pro world title has been vacated. And... I've been hearing that that's going to be you and me that's going to be ch in a match to see who's going to be the next Phoenix Pro World Champion. But do know that I want world title reign number 21 because I lost my ACW World Mayhem Championship not too long ago. And I want another world title around my waist. Around my size 40 waist. Because having a world title on me definitely looks pretty good on the living proof. It. Because a lot of people are saying that I'm dealing with an identity crisis. Because people are saying, wait, Extreme Tony, you're, you're the living proof over in ACW and then... You're not the leader of BK Ford in Phoenix Pro, but you're still a playmaker next to WL. Like, what's going on with you, Extreme Tony? Well, one thing is that you know what's what's been going on as of late. I've become a nostalgia act as the playmaker Extreme Tony, and that's not good. That's no bueno. Because one thing about me is that I've had to reinvent myself so many times in my 17-year career in CEW. Because back in my early days, I was part of this group called the Black Army. Where I was a world champion when I was only 23 years of age. And then I was part of C TWF and... And I thought I was a hot shit too when, when I, after winning the WWA world title and strutting around like I owned the place, but it shit ain't the same now because that that's that was back in 2007. This is 2024 now, and given that I'm already 40, it's not like I'm young. I'm I'm a grown ass man now, and as a grown ass man, I I need to set my game up because all these youngins who are faster and stronger, I need to reinvent myself again. That's why, as the leader of BK4, we're gonna take shit to a whole nother level, and that's why I'm now the living proof, Extreme Tony, because the one thing is. 
It was a pleasure making you look weak, JC Wolf. Because I've been hearing for quite some time that you don't wear the pants in your relationship with your girlfriend Mercedes. But one thing though is that given how long you've been with her, how come you've never popped the question? Because I popped the question with Tammy a long time ago and I put a ring on that finger and me and Tammy have, have a kid together and now she's starting her career in CEW. When are you going to pop the question? Or do you even want to pop the question? Because just like how you can't get the job done in, in that respect, you can't get the job done anymore. Because I've been throwing the word franchise player around and there are people that deserve that recognition and others who don't. Because don't get me wrong, you're good, but you're not great. At least you're not a fucking joke like a LaMarcus Carter. Though. Because there's times where you've been that, that franchise player and there's been times where you have not. You're, you've been a B-plus player in your career in CEW. And the, the only reason you don't, you're not in the A tier is because you need great talents to, to move out of the way in order for you to shine in the spotlight. Whereas I'm in the S tier and I shine regardless of how much great talent there is in, in the roster of any CAW league out there. Because you know that as well as any CAW league owner that knows that as well. And that's why in many CAW leagues, I've become the safe choice. You know what that means. The one that you need someone to give credibility, not only to your CAW league, but also to your world title. Because I'll be giving th that Phoenix Pro world title some credibility by me holding it around my waist. So it's win-win. If you think about it, I'm eagle. Because I'll be... More than happy to beat you and be the Phoenix Pro World Champion because that's just the next step here for me in Phoenix Pro. And Savaske, I look forward to hearing your response. And it's not going to be a classic like I used to say. Believe that, Holmes. Well, that's right, JC Wolf on the microphone. Got to address everything that's been said and I've got to respond to the words. The scathing words of Extreme Tony. Because it's not right. If I get attacked on the microphone and I don't respond, I've done that my whole career. My whole 12 year career, that is what I've been known for. You step up to me on the microphone, I'm coming straight for you. But I've stepped away from that because I don't want that. But Extreme Tony's made this personal. So let's address everything. Now I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. Let's address BK4. Now the reason BK, I left BK4 wasn't because of disagreements. It wasn't because we had an argument. It wasn't because we didn't like each other anymore. I left BK4 because those guys didn't need me anymore. Barnett and Mason did not need me anymore. They have become one of the greatest tag teams in core history. Multiple time world champions. And they're only at the, at the beginning of their careers. They didn't need me guiding them. At the start of their careers, yes, they did. And that was the whole reason of BK4. That's the reason we, I set up BK4 to guide the new talent that's why I brought in Extreme Tony Extreme Tony is a, a superstar that I looked up to a superstar that trained me 
superstar that showed me the ropes. I wanted his knowledge, not only to be passed on for me, to for him to pass his knowledge onto the next generation of superstars. And that is the reason why I had BK4. And I left because they didn't need me anymore. And I needed something new. I needed to rebuild. And this is why I made history. Now, I'm going to give a quick history lesson. While working at Phoenix Pro, I was also working with a company known as WXW. And I'll be honest, WXW screwed me properly. They couldn't handle the ego of JC Wolf, so they just got rid of it. It's fair enough. <laughs> That's been my career. I go somewhere, people don't, can't handle how I run things, how I do things, and they just get rid of me. But in those places, not only has that been the case, I have screwed people, stabbed people in the back, done things for my own game. So, so many times. But I'm coming to the tail end of my career. And I was thinking, I don't want that to be my reputation. Yes, I want it to be part of my legacy, but not to be my legacy. I want to be known as a superstar who did what it took. But I also want to be known as a superstar who was a legend, who changed the face of the game. That's what Extreme Tony's done, the franchise player, the playmaker, the nostalgia act. That's what Extreme Tony's done, and that's what I want to do. That's what I am doing. But to do that, I need to rebuild some bridges. And going back to WXW. They wanted me to bring the tag team partner. Now, I could have brought any member of BK4 and I could have asked Extreme Tony to come in. I did. But he wasn't available, which is fine. Extreme Tony's a busy guy. So I brought in the one person I knew I could trust. And I'm not saying I can't trust Barnett and Wolf and Mason. I've always been able to trust them. But for this rivalry, for that match, I needed something special. I needed somebody I had chemistry with. And that was Harry Wolf. Now, for those who know my history, of all the screw jobs, Harry Wolf was my biggest. Me and Harry Wolf were a team back in the CCR, DCA days. We were the best. Multiple time world champions, singles championships, great runs, faction runs. But I screwed him over for glory. I screwed him over for a bigger paycheck and the girl on my arm. That is right. Mercedes, for those who don't know, is Harry Wolf's sister. I screwed over my best friend, not only for the promise of gold and a bigger paycheck, but I took the one thing that he had left, and that was his sister. Now, any man who does that to anybody doesn't deserve a second chance. But Harry gave me that. Because he knows our history. He knows how good we are together. He knows our history. And that is where the name comes from. Because myself and Harry Wolf have created a history. Myself and Cody Hagen have got history. Some of the greatest matches in my career have been against Cody Hagen. This is what I've got respect for. We've created history. There's one more person to make this faction complete. And that was Extreme Tony. Now, Extreme Tony is an, a veteran in this industry. A superstar that I have looked up to for so many years. Wherever Extreme Tony was, I wanted to be there. I wanted to surround myself. I wanted to be close to that superstar. To mould, to model myself on him. The playmaker, Extreme Tony. And he did. He showed me the ropes. And I will always have respect for him for that. He showed me the ropes. I mean, me and Extreme Tony have had a rivalry that spans back decades. We've had some of the best matches. And I'll tell you, one of the best matches I've had in my career was against Extreme Tony at DCA or CCL pay-per-view, Last Man Standing. We literally and figuratively almost killed each other in that match. Hell, I suplexed him 
off the ring post through the damn announce table. And then for good measure, I dropped an elbow on top of him. Eternal bleeding. We have busted each other open. We have put each other in hospital. But we always came back. We always knew we were competitive. And this is why I brought Extreme Tony into BK4. I wanted that experience to help the younger guys. I wanted that experience to help out Barnett and Wolf. And it did. Hell, Mason Wolf's going around using the burning hammer. That isn't the biggest compliment to a superstar. What is? So I've always had respect for Extreme Tony. Always did. Being the operative word there. I'll tell you why. Extreme Tony. We had our match. We had our match recently at Phoenix Pro. Another great match. We always put on absolute stellar matches. We put five star matches on every single time. I extended my hand to shake yours, and you did the one thing, the cowardliest thing you could do. You went low. Lit literally and figuratively. You kicked a man between the legs and walked away proud of it. You see, Extreme Tony, at that moment, all respect was gone. You took the coward's way out. You could have hit me from behind, struck me with a steel chair, taken a kendo stick to my knee. Things that we've done to each other before. But never would I have ever kicked you in the nuts. And that's what you did. And to me, that is the ultimate disrespect. See, this wasn't meant to be a war. Extreme Tony. Myself, history, you and BK4. It wasn't meant to be a war. But you made it a war. And this war will end in something that has never been done. In Phoenix Pro. He's coming soon. Not only will it be the war between BK4 and history, it will be inside War Games. So, you see, Tony, you want to make this personal. You want to talk about Mercedes. You wanted to throw away 20 years, 15 years of history. Because you wanted that one more moment of glory. Wow. I'm not one to feed egos, but for one night only, I'll do that. Extreme Tony, you've made this personal. You've made this a war. I hope you're ready. Because history is not going to repeat itself.